Hi, everybody. Welcome to the John Meyer Podcast. Today's topic, fine-tune your cloud model for business outcomes. But before we get to that, how about we let our guests introduce themselves? Thanks. I'm Kyle Jepson. I'm a strategic architect within our digital velocity practice, focusing on cloud and cloud native. Um, I am a uh, certified Kubernetes administrator, and I focus a lot on cloud native patterns and practices for cloud adoption. Okay, Kyle, what is fine tuning your cloud, your business model for outcomes? What, what is this all about? Yeah, so we talk about uh, fine tuning your cloud operating model or using a cloud operating model versus existing or traditional IT operating models as a means of being able to accelerate your cloud adoption. Um, you know, organizations are trying to get the most out of cloud, and a lot of the time that's based around their applications and, and how they uh, build, package, deploy, and manage applications uh, in the cloud. And um, there are certain you know, things within a legacy IT operating model that uh, doesn't necessarily seamlessly fit within the way that we want to get outcomes around uh, application patterns and practices or, or the way that we can get velocity for building applications so businesses can rapidly experiment with applications, they can fine tune their uh, customer experiences. So it, it's really about how do you get the speed of innovation? How do you unlock business agility? How do you, um, how do you build applications that are built for cloud? And that means we have to look holistically across your operating model and look at uh, how you build and package applications alongside infrastructure together and use a, a seamless or, or uniform set of workflows associated with um, how you get those applications promoted from your dev environments into, into production. Okay, so this is what you do for digital velocity. Yes. You look at the business application and say, and, and is this on-premise going to cloud? Uh, it can be on-prem. It can be cloud. Um, oh, I going from cloud to cloud, or enhancing current cloud business models or applications. Yeah. So uh, the way we we look at it is, um, you know, if I have an application like a web service or or something, um, I, I can host that on-prem. I can host that in cloud. But the way that I build those applications, the way that I package the applications and and deploy them um, in a in a modern cloud operating paradigm, you can leverage technologies like containers, Kubernetes, serverless, um, and that is not it doesn't really fit well within you know your traditional operating models where you're you're submitting tickets for for everything you're going through the process of of you know team after team touches a ticket and and you go to to resolution um you know we we talk to organizations all the time and and in some cases to be able to get the infrastructure resources that dev uh, developers need in order to get their applications built tested and into production you can be looking at you know, weeks, months uh, for being able to to build and test applications because they're waiting around for uh, for resources. And so the cloud is is all about how do you get the agility behind getting access to those resources. And there are definitely differences between um, the kinds of tools that we select, the the, the patterns, uh, the workflows that teams select, uh, the skill sets involved with those kinds of things as as organizations evolve. Kyle, how are you achieving this using digital velocity? Yeah, in, in digital velocity, we look at cloud as a set of patterns and practices and not so much a place, right? If, if I can build applications uniformly across environments, if I can build applications and infrastructure together and test them together in things like CI, CD pipelines, um, I, can use, uh, I can use similar workflows and similar tool sets for building in VMs, in containers, in on-prem systems, in cloud systems, um, but it requires that you you look at you know an everything as code approach. So now you're getting into infrastructure as code, policy as code, um, and you're leveraging things like CI/CD pipelines in order to promote that work through the system. And if everything is code, that everything follows software patterns, everything follow everything should be a part of a, a it checked into like git repositories and now your git repository and the branching strategies you use inside of a git repository becomes your governance mechanisms and it becomes the way that you uh handle change management i can see the audit logs of things that change in um in, in my repos so i get this visibility into what changed when so infrastructure can be code, your applications are code, 
And so that's a huge paradigm shift away from, you know, traditional VM management. And I think when we talk to organizations, a lot of the time they treat cloud like they treated data center. <laughs> I have seen this so many times where they built like for like from data center to cloud. And you're really touching on some of the challenges of achieving successful business outcomes to go to the cloud. Right. You want the velocity. You want to be able to, um, you want to be able to build applications faster. That means I need infrastructure faster. Well, how do you get infrastructure faster? Well, I can't go point and click through a cloud console anymore. I need to use infrastructure as code to be able to build those cloud resources. Um, I need to have configuration as code. And if I have that all checked into Git repos, then I, there's a lot of benefit behind. I can control um, how changes are made. I can control uh, who can make changes to what resources. I can control who is an approver to be able to move that code into the next phase. Um, and and so you, there's, again, lots and lots of benefits around how you do that. But those patterns are perfectly applicable for on-prem systems as long as you have the right tool sets and as long as you have the, the, the workflows and resources uh, to, and skill sets to be able to, to treat your on-prem systems like cloud. So when we say cloud is a pattern, not a place, that's kind of what we mean um, in that everything is code uh, and, and that creates a, a lot of organizational benefit and unlocks a lot of velocity. Kyle, how are you achieving a balance between cloud practices and business outcomes and getting the same results though? We have a, a program we call the Cloud Operating Model Acceleration Program, which basically goes in and, and measures um, what organizational outcomes are desired, what, what the goals of the organization are, um, looks at how organizations are, are setting those goals, but between leadership and practitioners as well, we're, we're, we're taking a look at, at how um, the, the implementation details essentially, or, or the way that organizations are um, leveraging those various tools, where they're at from a maturity standpoint, um, do they want to get to container orchestration? Do they want to get to an everything is code model? Um, and then help them plot the course to be able to get there. And that requires sometimes taking on new skill sets. It requires uh, cultural change in some cases. It, it requires a, a mindset shift. So how do you set the vision behind what cloud means to an organization um, and how you're leveraging cloud by taking advantage of those modern patterns and practices? Containers, as an example, give us the ability to deploy applications uh, in any environment. I can deploy, uh, I can deploy containers on prem, and I can take those same container images and I can deploy them uh, across clouds. And so that that gives us a, an ability to unlock, you know, where resources may live and and have a uniform build process for applications that um, can can be it, they can be deployed either, you know, on prem in the cloud, across environments. And, and that, again, creates that uh, the business outcomes that we're looking for in that sense are related to uh, innovation, you know, rapid ability to experiment and, and organizations can then look at how their, their business model can evolve by, you know, not being hamstrung by uh, you know, some legacy processes, if you will, for, uh, for building resources. Kyle, you talked to us about a number, the value basically of cloud model and utilizing it and the approach for it is really where I want to talk about. I want to dive in. What is your approach for a successful, is there really a successful cloud models I want to kind of touch on and their approach to it? Yeah, I would say so. I, lots of organizations have been extremely successful with cloud adoption and, and you know, there are varying scales of maturity. We, we talk to organizations all the time that are either taking their first steps or uh, some that are, you know, extremely high velocity, extremely uh, mature in in what they're doing, but there's always room for improvement. And as the industry evolves, the rapid innovation and, and the rapid business agility gives businesses the ability to react more quickly to changes in the industry as well. So an organization that already has mature cloud operating model. Uh, already has a mature cloud, cloud operating model and, and is using these principles, um, they're going to be able to respond much faster to things like uh, Gen AI when you know that was announced and, and has taken the world by storm. Now we can't we can't even mention cloud without talking about 
uh, you know, how Gen AI has impacted um, uh, organizational plans, right? Um, so as we, as we talk to organizations and, and we look at, at that, we definitely see the organizations who have been successful and we're helping others to kind of find that same path and create the, the paved road, if you will, for, for successful cloud adoption that goes beyond, um, you know, migration, but, but how do you, how do you change the way that you, you do things when you're, you're approaching cloud? Kyle, talk to me about Cloud Center of Excellence and Cloud Model. How, did they differ? How do you compare the two? Does the Cloud Model come before, with, or is it underneath the CCOE? Yeah, I would say um, we have this conversation a lot, and and it's really about um, your everybody has a an operating model, um, and a cloud operating model is is just one that takes advantage of of the way that we build applications and, and infrastructure in cloud, including, you know, dynamic resources. Um, and your skill sets though, can be vastly different between a, a, an operating model that wasn't built for cloud and one that is built for cloud. So when we talk about the kinds of, of skill sets that need to be in place, the kinds of workflows that need to be in place, if, if everything is code and everything follows an SDLC based process or a software development life cycle process, then, um, you know, your, your infrastructure engineers are now writing code and are now using Git as a, a means of being able to manage change. Um, and so if you set up a CCOE using uh, paradigms and, and, and processes that came from traditional data center management, well, then the skill sets that you have inside of a CCOE may differ vastly from, from what you may be able to optimize for. So I would say that by having a vision for a cloud operating model and one that includes the skill sets necessary to, to be able to build for a modern cloud, then the composition of your COE could be different. And a COE could have different functions. You could have a cloud COE. You could have a, uh, a, an automation COE. You can have COEs that serve different functions um, for, for different purposes as you, you go to evolve a uh, a new set of of practices that take advantage of of new technologies, and so I would say it, it's really important to get that vision right before you start to put together the the makeup of what a COE is going to have from a, a skill set and opinion standpoint, and that again that could change over time, um, but if we plan with the end state in mind in the future vision for, for how cloud can be used as an accelerator for your business. You were talking about skill sets and what if I don't have the skill sets to have a proper cloud model to achieve the business outcomes I'm looking for? Is that where digital velocity can come in and help me evaluate it, put in the proper plan and achieves those results that I'm looking for? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as a part of that, you know, we can map out you know, what are the skills necessary to be able to, to step into some of those, those new uh, patterns of practices? So if I need to get into an infrastructure as code model, if I, if I want to leverage policy as code, if I want to, to take advantage of, of new tools and, and, and systems and processes, we can absolutely be an accelerator for organizations as we look to understand where they're at today, where they're on their journey, and then here, plot those, those skill sets necessary and, and work as a part of the team as well to be able to to help accelerate those outcomes and then that becomes you know folks learning as a part of uh, a project solving real world use cases you look for those quick wins and and we uh, we go to to build together as uh, uh, as a partnership Kyle before I wrap things up let's talk about the future what does the future look like for fine-tuning cloud models for achieving the ultimate business outcomes? One of the things that we're seeing a lot of right now is, is a conversation around platform engineering. And so platform engineering is kind of an evolution, if you will, of DevOps, DevSecOps based approaches to, to managing uh, infrastructure and applications. And I see it as the reduction of cognitive load on developers. You want to keep developers working on the things that are high value to the organization, and they don't necessarily need to be experts in some of the underlying platforms and systems uh, like Kubernetes. Uh, they don't necessarily need to go and remember that very specific command that they need to be able to deploy to uh, uh, 
uh, to a specific environment. And so it, each one of those tasks or activities that isn't an intrinsic part of their job function takes them out of their daily work. Uh, and as the, if, if applications are the, uh, the way that organizations are, are interacting with their customers and new feature development is what keeps organizations um, moving forward into the future, then we have to keep those folks productive and, and happy and, and uh, working in an environment that, that they want to be in. And so part of that is with platform engineering is we want to take off their shoulders the things that aren't intrinsic. So um, maybe that's some of the, the uh, security concerns. Maybe that's um, other concerns around underlying systems. And that's where the platform, com platform team comes in to be able to handle all of that stuff to create the paved road so that we're making their lives as easy as possible for requesting resources, for getting access to infrastructure and access to the, the things that they need in order to, uh, to continue to maximize their velocity. I love how IT is ever evolving from dev, DevSecOps now to platform engineering and taking it off. We're just getting better and better at our jobs and creating additional or removing, you know, titles from the lead way, but we're ultimately trying to achieve results and focus on what really matters is the business outcomes. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of the time that's, that's just built around the, the customer experience. So, you know, how do you serve your customers? And that's all built around the applications that, um, that you're, you're building and, and, uh, and maintaining. All right. Well, Kyle, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching the John Meyer podcast. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notify because guess what? We're out of here.